we're going to do something like ChatGPT before ChatGPT announced or rolled out. Our ideas were independent. So we brought all the different teams together, the IoT, the cloud computing, the network to form one single program. And the world was wow. Even Nigerians couldn't believe it. They mm. started hearing our stories from our yeah. What makes you not just say, you know what, let me just relax? Africa have got no representation in the global space in terms of high tech like robotics and AI. Nobody could mm. believe Africa if you don't if you don't prove it. So why not just start the journey and make that mark? Yes, we have the facility and uh, we are highly motivated. There's the big one coming here. It will shape the whole of Africa since we're launching the first. Like, what exactly is going on in your mind to invest in doing this and ensuring that this is actually done from Africa? And um, I feel like a lot of stories need to be told, yeah. you know, about the great work that you guys are doing here. I started being inspired when I was growing up. I see that I have restrictions to these technologies I can use as a Nigerian. Mm. You know, uh, that regional barrier and limitation. And by the way, I've been a techie from secondary school. I was very good. Oh. You know, and uh, I was sponsored by you said in some uh, courses, and but then knowing the predicament around Nigeria funding, you can't get it all out there. So I went into the business sector to make the money. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So and after that, I I felt it was time for me to make yeah. impact uh, in technology space across Africa. So I I, I felt I should bridge technology gap. You know, mm. there are a lot of technology gaps, so, and then come up with solutions that are tailored to the need of Africa. Because mm. over time, Africa keep consuming technology that wasn't designed for them. Mm. Uh, take, for example, uh, you know, I know those days when people buy Tokumbo cars, they say they will go and change the radiator because that it's is double cell and yes, all that. Yes. It wasn't designed for Nigeria and all that, mm. you know. So, same is also. Uh, applicable in the space of technology. So first of all, what we try to do is to tour around the globe mm. to know the state of art of technology, what's going on. And we started it like a STEM, mm. science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Are you an engineering person? Yeah, I'm an industrial, oh, industrial chemist. Oh, industrial chemist. Yeah, so I've, cool. I've been able to dive. I also did ICT. Wow. And then on the area of... Uh, you know, development and uh, AI as well. So uh, after which we came back and uh, by the way, uh, one of my uh, kind of uh, backbone was agriculture. You know, it was funding the projects for us. Really? Yeah, yeah. So we set up one of the best STEM laboratory across Africa, and uh, you know, STEM is all about research and deployment. So uh, we started uh, setting up the different teams, the hardware team, the software. Even within the software, there are sub teams. Then the requirement for infrastructure started coming up. Okay, you want to do what is the state of art because that's what we say we want to do. We don't want to be left behind five years behind after technologies have been left. We are coming to start with it. So we, we claim to be top uh, 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 as a kind of a outcome of our, our tour. We know what every other person is working on the AI, the likes of robots, and, and the rest of that. Let's do something big, guys. Yes, we have the facility and uh, we are highly motivated. Let's do some. Africa have got no representation in the global space in terms of high tech like robotics and AI. So why not just start the journey and make that mark? So mm. that was how we started. The team was like, can we do it? And by the way, we tried to get some parts, uh, you know, already made, but nobody's willing to let go. Everybody's still also currently working. You can say there is one full blown company selling robots. And so when we started, I said, then it's good, let's compete. You know, so we wow. started in, uh, ordering part, building from scratch, which led to the launch of the first one. But prior to that, there are requirements we need in order to run uh, AI to keep testing, building models, which is the computing power, mm. the GPUs. GPUs and, yeah. So we, we tend to buy in our capacity, we spend money. Do, because, I mean, can we yeah, even yeah, get GPUs so. in Africa right now? Because uh, I even hear that rare. the waiting list is like two years long. Yeah, it's very rare, actually. So we, we, we use some technology to put up some different components of GPUs together. 
uh, to some point to retrain at least and also to allow us own our model. You know, then there is this story about oh, African uh, startup. Their ideas are being stolen when they host their 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 uh, solutions in the cloud in different clouds. So we really want to take charge of our solutions and. So we brought all the different teams together, the IoT, the cloud computing, the, the, the yeah, embedded system, the network, and all of that to the AI to form one single product. That shows capa capability, that shows a proof of concept for us. And the world was wow. Even Nigerians couldn't believe it. They started mm. hearing our stories from abroad, yeah. you know, and um, it, it told us that, look, uh, there is more we can do. And doing our launch at, at Transcorp uh, by the then vice president and some other great dignitaries, we mentioned that the line of product for that they should look forward to should be Omefa as a service. That is the software part of our intelligence. Mm. That was before ChatGPT announced or rolled out. So our ideas were independent. So we're going to do something like ChatGPT. So after which, yeah, because we we're trying to, how do we make this available for the masses? Everybody's not going to buy robots. Yes. Do you understand? And part of it, is we also say, robot, you can have this as a robot. Just have the intelligence. It can communicate and also listen. And the computer vision profile people identify her, uh, you know, can, can it's, it's, it's very limitless, you know, what you can do with computer vision, mm. you know. So, and we want to pull them out as a part and make them a product in the relevant fields. So, mm. so you, you can see the continuity, the process, how we keep growing as a result of problem statement driven, right? So, and uh, we Where, where, where does this, your curiosity, come from? Uh, naturally, growing up, I've always been, yeah, being a researcher, I'm a core researcher, I've always wanted to provide solutions. So that's why at, at all points of my life, I never wanted to do government thing or work any job. It has been research, research, research. So uh, you can see some of these scientific movies. Uh, I'm a fan, you know. <laughs> yeah. So how, how am I going to find myself doing this kind of thing? So growing up, that was the idea, you know, and, um, and delving into it and uh, it was becoming a reality. So, and I must tell you, ideation is something I enjoy doing. Mm. You know, wake up with this crazy idea, try to think over it, develop it. Sometimes I'm just uh, thinking, uh, <laughs> trying to come up with more ideas. So, but they are, they are, they are, they are a kind of, um, it's something that is a kind of a, uh, incremental, you yes. know, you must get to a particular level before you will be exposed to know, okay, or have that insight, okay, we can do it better, we can take it a little further than this. And all but how, but how, how have you been able to marry your um, your ideas with the sometimes hard realities of building from Africa? Yeah, that, that I saw that from beginning. Okay, I was privileged to, uh, uh, I think, serve in an NMPC refinery for Tarkot. I saw how typical Africa organization of producing facility works. So it's something I don't want to do. Do you understand? So mm -hmm. I know what are the problems of Africa and Nigeria, number one, funding, and also uh, uh, patriotism. You will see an African man would prefer to buy a foreign-made product than the local one. So I was not going to bank on anybody to fund me. So I, I went to do the conventional business, you know. What aspects? Yeah, I, it cut across different aspects, in, including construction chemicals. Oh. Uh, yeah, including, uh, uh, yeah, at some point we're doing uh, uh, a kind of a interior deco a company. So you went into brick and mortar? No, I had to make the money. I, I was in stock, but stock crashed. You know, I was doing very well in stock, the, the secondary trading, yes. the, uh, you know, uh, and it crashed. So, and uh, then finally agriculture, the mechanized farming, you know, and then eventually export of commodity to the U.S., to Europe, and, uh, you know, because we must keep the money coming. Then, uh, yeah, importation of uh, 
Yeah, I think uh, some gypsy, yeah. you know. Uh, so we grew a very yeah. big business from there, and uh, that became a backbone and the comfort, uh, you know. So it's almost like so. you you had a goal, and to achieve your goal, I must have a stepping stone. You had a stepping stone, yeah. and then you use that as a stepping stone to get closer to your goal. Exactly, exactly. So so wow. when I was funding, people were like, oh, because I know. It's not something that is gonna bring me funding one year to you know uh, and all of that and nobody could mm. believe Africa if you don't if you don't prove it. Wow. Yeah. So nobody's gonna believe you. So you're talking to me because you've seen something. If I was waiting to say I can do this, I need you to come. Everybody come and support yeah. me. Of course, uh, yeah. I'll be a laughing stock, right? Mm. So, but I I just saw that taking a step. Um, it kind of uh, unveils other hidden opportunities. So how how did you manage? I'm I'm trying to get into the mental framework. How did you manage the fact that I mean most people I mean some people have dreams they make money they forget about it. Some people have dreams as they pursue the money that they are looking for to get the dream like you. They just say I beg I beg let me go. Some people will say I don't even take the risk. Mm. Or they say what what makes you not do that and what makes you because in pursuing a dream there's always that challenge right what makes you not just say you know what let me just relax you know mm -hmm. i'll be taking care of why am i doing this because i'm not necessarily this is, not, this is not my source of money so why, why do i want to do it yeah from the one it wasn't all about the money i've made it clear is it's the impact and sometimes when i speak with my colleagues i tell them we will be privileged to be solution providers for our own continent for our own fatherland mm. and our children will hear our story but no matter how you make money your story may hardly continue you know but impacts speak louder than money mm. so it was not all about my belly no no luxury for me i've kept luxury aside because and chose impacts mm. and believe me it has been the same all the way otherwise I can easily quit, or if it's all about, look, man must survive, <laughs> you know, anything. Oh, I was good with other things I was doing. Mm. Yeah, but I chose this part because it's, 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 it's a heavy investment that went in. And you may come, you may hardly see. Do you understand? Even setting up our labs is all started. Uh, yeah. You know, sometimes some colleagues will call, Kai, 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 I can't do what you're doing. Anything that won't give me my money back in six months, in three months, in one month, ah, forget yeah. it, you know. So, but it's not all about that, you know. Uh, it was a uh, Brian Lincoln that says that uh, when when people don't live their vision, when they don't do anything, like a kind of living a goal, then they may even die, yes. you know. So, so it's not all about you have the money, you're not gonna eat from money. So, I think it's the impact part. So, bridging technology gap across Africa, and um, uh, kind of a Tailoring down the problem into solution, you know, with technology. Mm. So that was how we came about all the application of AI. And good thing, Chat GPT you know, were very shaking. We did we launched our own, even though they, they had more advantage in terms of computing power and data. But it, it was still encouraging, you know, coming from Africa. And we delve into blockchain for high level security protection. Because if we must be doing that, we have to follow the trend of 4IR, Industrial Revolution, you yes. know, to be sure that these are emerging technology, technology that are currently trending. So we'll play around with it. And uh, then the digital literacy came up. Hmm. And now there's the big one coming up yeah, to shake the whole of Africa soon. Which is that? On, on, on health, you know. So yeah. we're launching a solution, the first and main AI-driven solution along with telemedicine for, for, for the masses, mm. not just the hospital, you know? Mm. So it will redefine uh, uh, um, healthcare solution, you know? So, and I, I will, I'm happy to have a conversation around that, you know? Uh, mm. So, I, I'm beside, yeah, the, the, the digital literacy also, it's something that every nation needs, not individual, because, mm. You can be talking about digital economy without uh, digitally digital empowering or enabling the people. The Naira redesign didn't work through because that was a lacking uh, a, a kind of um, um, uh, solution 
around the people because so many people have never used mobile banking. They've never, digital literacy goes down to even how to power a digital device, how to use the internet in safety mode and all of that. So it's needed. You'll be surprised that even the professors, the academias, they, they, they are lacking in this area. So we need to align. You know, the COVID exposed all of us in Africa that we weren't ready. True. So nobody was learning, you can imagine, because they weren't prepared. So it will still take us a long time. So the people need to be ready, you yeah. know, the people, because they are the drivers of economy. So if you're talking about digital economy in agri, in whatever sector, so the people need to be enabled. enabled. So, so digital economy is the trend of the day. And for that reason, even the UN is having the national, the international conference at Bahrain on digital skills because it's just the order of the future, uh, or the, the present and the future. And the future. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, well, and then the yeah. defense, what we're doing around defense in hardware part, you know. Yeah, yeah I mean so, that, that, that that really so, blew me away, like. Drones that are that are staying in the air for how many hours? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's really impressive. Yeah, it's really impressive. So, so thank you very much for your time. But I would yeah. like you at the end to just please introduce yourself to us the way you would like yourself introduced. Oh, okay. Um, my name is Dr. Chuk Sukwe. I'm the chairman of Unicorn Group of companies.